Welcome to Mark Twain Lake Fishing Intel, your bass, crappie, and catfish resource. If you're looking to become a better angler while you're here at Mark Twain Lake, we provide all the latest tips, tricks, and know-how to make your fishing trip the best it could be and learn different techniques that's going to put more fish in the boat while you're here at Mark Twain Lake. Whether you're a seasoned tournament angler or you just like to fish for fun, we got you covered. Get all the latest daily and weekly fishing reports that will help you put more fish in the boat. So become a member today of Mark Twain Lake Fishing Intel and stay up to date on what's going on here at Mark Twain Lake. Now a word from our sponsors. Check out 154 Marine in Perry, Missouri. New and used boats available with a full line of Tahoe pontoons for all you pleasure boaters out there. And a full line of Excel boats, a full service shop, along with a full line of accessories to get you back out on the water. The Hunting Corner located in Monroe City, Missouri, where they have a full line of ammunition, hunting rifles and more. They also have plenty of fishing gear along with minnows, rods, reels, and plenty of archery gear to make your hunting trip a success. And don't forget about all your lawn care needs here at the Hunting Corner with the small engine repair shop as well. And Luke Mitchell, your Missouri Land Specialist with High Point Land Company. Give him a call for all your hunting and recreational land at 573-541-1232. And the Junction Restaurant located in Perry, Missouri, Highway 19 and 154, if you're looking for steak, chicken, pasta, and more, check out the Junction Restaurant in Perry, Missouri. So let's start the show. Hey everybody, uh, Jason here with Mark Twain Lake Fishing Intel. Uh, thanks for tuning in to this month's roundtable. Here we are, April the 18th. Uh, we got Dennis with Northeast Missouri Angler. We got special guest John Wentz from Moberly, Missouri. He's a long time uh, fisherman on this lake back when it started and uh, we're going to get into some of his stories and, and uh, he actually made the first lake map of Mark Twain Lake waterproof map and uh, all that good stuff so thanks for joining us today John. Thank you. Glad to have you and we got Keith Williams from Mark Twain Guide Service and uh, we got a pretty good show today I think we're going to talk some catfish and bass and crappie uh, everything's rolling right now and we're going to uh, you know, get into John and, and have him go over all the old time Mark Twain Lake, a few stories and all that good stuff. But I want to thank Rooster's Bar and Grill for hosting it. Uh, had some good food. What did you end up having? I just had wings. Wings. Fish sandwich. Fish sandwich. I had a hamburger, fries, and he had, he had iced <laughs> He's tea. He's good. And uh, all that good stuff. And uh, so we'll just get right into it. We got a nice rainy day today. Uh, Finally, we're getting some rain, so hopefully the lake comes up a little bit. But what's the lake level right now? Anybody paying attention? 605, 51, 605. I think. Wow. Yeah. Normal pool. Almost. <coughs> Almost yep. there. Almost. Finally. So. But anyway, uh, you want to get us started, John? Sure. And, and kind of talk about you know how you how you started doing these lake maps. And, and well, at one time, I got out of the Marine Corps, and I went to work for cartographic company, I made maps, and then I started my own uh, printing company, and I joined the Mobile Area Bass Club, and then I found out that Mark Twain Lake was going to be developed, so I decided, well, is there any fishing maps for Mark Twain Lake? There wasn't any. So I came up with the Mark Twain Lake map here that's waterproof plastic, and we, we developed these maps in 1985. Couple, that's a couple years ago. Yeah, <laughs> just and a few. Our bass club fished the lake uh, quite a few times, and I belong to several other bass world sports and, and several other clubs, and we, we fished tournaments over here and had a great time. Uh, the lake's changed quite a bit in 40-some years, but we certainly enjoy doing it now. Uh, I know you, you kept a lot of records. I did. Back in the day. and. And it's kind of cool to see this. Uh, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it or not, but you want to maybe touch base on a few of the, the weights and, and some of the weather and, and 
and the dates and some of the circuits? We didn't have all this good, fancy electronic equipment and technology back in our day. We had to do it the hard way. <laughs> so I, I uh, fished all these tournaments, and I wanted to know, you know, from one year to the next, what, what, uh, what the situation was during the days. So I basically made, made these uh, charts up and gave you the date, the circuit, the lake location, lake level, like the water temperature, air temperature, the type of day it was, and then what's the, what's the depth the fish were biting at, where's the winning location for that tournament. And I also put down what kind of baits were used at that particular time. I charted uh, what the cost was. Uh, it was amazing back then. It cost $50 to join a tournament compared oh. <laughs> to 200 today, which is typical. Right. A little inflation there. But, uh, yeah, these charts uh, helped me quite a bit from one year to the next. I'd actually like to have one. Yeah. Yeah. So you... I mean, I did. So if you look at a couple of these, John, uh, what circuits did you fish back then uh, on Mark Twain Lake? Let's see. What did I have back there? I had uh, Bass World Sports, the Pipe Fitters, the U.S. Bass Circuit, uh, the uh, Midwest Bass Association, U.S. Bass, uh, club tournaments, Bud Light tournaments. Kind of, kind of go over what, what one. Let, let's say this bass tournament right here, uh, one of the Bass World Sports. Uh, and the kind of the date. If, if you got, is, is the date on here? Yeah, this was back uh, in April. Bass World Sports. What year? Uh, lake level was two foot low. What year was it? Uh, this was in 80, 88. 88, okay. And the clarity of the water, it was clear and windy that day. What Air temperature is 58, the water temperature was 60. The winning uh, stringer came out of uh, Norfolk. Huh. Uh, happened to be us. Happened to be you? Yeah. <laughs> what a few tournaments in his day. Just a few, and ended up in 1988 fishing uh, Midwest bass, and made Mr. Bass in 1988. We had 47 professional fishermen with 47 amateurs that year. Okay. So you had to get points in every tournament in order to get Mr. Bass. So after that, I kind of backed off of fishing and I retired from it. <laughs> <laughs> so John, what? Is fun? what? And what were part of the lakes that really did well back then, uh, if you can recall? Indian what? Creek, Big Indian, was very good productive. The uh, Middle Fork Arms and North Fork Arms were very, very well back then, as well as the main lake. But it, it depended on the time of year, the time of year it was. In the summer, you went out in the main lake. I remember one time we fished out of Blackjack Marina uh, Steve Botkins and I fished a tournament, and we took off out of there early that morning and headed up to Big Indian. And out there, before you get to the Allen on Big Indian, something happened to my motor and blew up. We sat down <laughs> in the middle of the lake. Steve looked at me and said, Hey, what are we going to do? I said, Well, we got all day. Troll motor works. Let's fish. <laughs> so we sat out there in the middle of the lake and went trolled around the Allen, didn't see anything. And I saw saw bass or something hitting the top of the water out there and we started trolling out there and I said let's get up there a spook on and we'll go out there and, and uh, see what happens. So every time the fish were biting the water, busting the water, we threw a spook in there and caught them. We limited out there by noon. Water patrol come by and said, what's the matter John, what's happening? I said, well, motor blew up. He said, well you want me to pull you into blackjack? I said, sure, I appreciate it. So he started pulling us in about 12 o'clock, we got there about 2 o'clock. <laughs> That's a long, long haul pull our boat. We pulled in blackjack, and the weigh-in was like 2.30. Of course, we won the tournament. <laughs> they said, you know, you're the only guy I know that can win the tournament with a blown-up motor. <laughs> That's pretty cool there. That was a fun time. Yeah. yeah. So when did you actually quit tournament fishing? 1991. 1991. Right. So, so the lakes changed a lot. 
since you it's you've changed. It it's silted in tremendously, and obviously the timbers brought it off, broke down in most places that we had to go to, and the little cuts and crevices. I I uh, guided a sports writer, Gerald Scott, from conservationist back in '85, I think it was, and uh, he wanted to come over here fishing for a couple of days. The first day he wanted to go crappie fishing. I said, okay. So we went up to North Fork Farm and went, went in a little in Crusher Creek. And as you go into Crusher Creek, there's a little cut in there that uh, we just pulled the boat in and started crappie fishing. We started pulling out these 15 inch crappie. And Gerald said, boy, I'm, I'm catching a lot more crappie than you are. I said, that's fine, I'm not a crappie fisherman. I like bass fishing. <laughs> About that time, I hooked this 3-5 crappie and pulled him in. And Gerald said, wow, started taking pictures, writing articles about, about that crappie. But that's the biggest crappie I caught on Martin Twain, was 3.5. Wow. That's a pretty good size crappie. Really good one. Yeah, but I say where I'm at, where I was fishing back in those days, is all silver. You can't even Dry land. Yeah. yeah. Now, you also did lake maps for like Thomas Hill Reservoir and Long Branch. Thomas Hill and Long Branch. Right here. Right. And that's you that's, on the that's, that's you on the cover. That's me on the cover of both of these. Far away here, but that's him on the cover. So if you've got this Long Branch Thomas Hill map here, that's John right here on the cover. That's him on the cover of the Mark Twain maps as well. Now who took that picture? Do you is it on there? Uh, no, a friend of mine took that. Took that. Yeah. That's cool. Well, it was a lot of fun. Yeah draw the maps up. And we actually had a plat book map way back in the 1983. And I took this plat book and colored it in to where you could see the lake levels at uh, 606. And you've got all the contours on the map. There are, I think, like 20-foot contours, so you can look at this map here and see what the map, the lake actually looked like. And some of it's still going to be similar, but yeah, you might find some interesting areas on there just looking at that. I like yours a lot better than mine. I like all the color. You did a good job on that. <laughs> Real good job on it. Well, I'm an old photographer and a printer. <laughs> So you own and Crown I, Press and Mobley. Correct? I own Crown Press. I started Crown Press in 1972, and I uh, sold it in 2008. And retired. And yes. <laughs> so now all I do is fish and play golf. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that. Well, we appreciate you being here, and that's uh, appreciate you having me. That's that's a lot of good good information, and uh, you know, kind of seeing how the lake started. Did you you started fishing it when it first filled up? I did. And there was a lot of good structure that's no longer here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But you've still got a wonderful lake and a lot of good areas to fish. And I'm sure there are some 10 plus pounders in this lake. Oh, I'm sure there are. Yeah. yeah. I know you caught a, one close to seven yesterday. Didn't you a little over seven. You had a, a five plus. You had a five two and a bunch of three pounders. Yeah. We had a great day yesterday. Yeah. The, fish are, yeah. the bass are biting. Yeah. They are yeah. biting. I went into Pigeon Pigeon's Bruce there and caught two six-pounders right off the bat in the tournament one day. They're there. They, they're still in pigeon. They're there. They're, they're the a little ones. harder to catch. They're a little, They're kind of out in some different areas now. you got to search for them a little more. Sure. But they're still there. Still a good pocket. I mean, all the main pockets are still good. The rivers are hurting. Like you talked about catching fish up in North Fork Bass. It's, it's tough. tough. It's tough to find them up there. I, I don't really know exactly why. I guess siltation. Maybe they're having spawning problems. They're just not there like they were. I know I caught a three and a half pound smallmouth up way up in the North Fork back then too. Yep. I hear of somebody catching one every once in a while, still catching a smallmouth. But I, I've never, I caught, I don't know how many bass caught this, like I've never caught one. And you still have walleye? I'm, actually, the walleye are doing better. Good. Yeah, there's a lot of walleye better. I caught, I caught a lot year. of walleye last year. I mean, I was probably 30 to 40 that I caught last year. For me, that's a lot of walleye because I don't fish it them. It is. Right. Yeah, I don't fish for them. We caught them. And the catfish, pretty good here too. Let us know about that. Yeah. It's picking. It's getting better. Get better. It isn't what it was in the 80, late 80s, early 90s. Right. 
Yeah. The lake got raked pretty hard for about 20 years. Oh, it did. That's I know. Shot you feel, At one time, you could come out here and about 15 casts, you could catch 15 crappie, 15 inches long. Wow. It was unbelievable. So this lake can do it. It's just, right. it's just the pressure we get is yeah. so high. It, it is. And it's not, it's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen right, right. now. The pressure gets so bad at this time. Part of what we're having now or seeing now.